we're just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of roll this thing tonight and see what God wants to do. James said, 1-5, if, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask. Ask in faith, not wavering. Not, do not let any man think he'll receive anything if he's, if he's wavering. The double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen? That doesn't mean God doesn't want to give you anything. It means that you're, if you've got to be focused. If, you, if you're not focused on what you're believing the Lord for, it's, you're not going to be able to receive. Amen? I'm going to ask y'all to excuse me right now. Oh, I got ready at 4 o'clock to, to come up here tonight. Went upstairs, and all of a sudden it started getting warm. Went back downstairs, and the thermostat was set on 70, 69, and the, and the temperature went up, was up to 78, and it was climbing. So needless to say, the air conditioner went out. So I went upstairs and got ready to come back down and sit under the ceiling fan until it's time to go. <laughs> but we're here now. All right. If I start sweating, don't y'all worry about it. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, 1, that faith is the substance of things not seen, a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Faith is, is more than just faith. Faith is persuasion. Faith is what persuades us. A lot of people think, well, if I have enough faith, I can persuade God, God to do something for me. Maybe I'm trying to get him something he might not even know if he wants to do. But faith, this faith is to persuade you, is to persuade us that God's already done everything he's going to do and he wants to bless you and he'll do everything for you that lines up with his will, amen? The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God for he that comes to him must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek him. That's where our problem comes in time, sometimes. This Bible, it's the answer for every question we have, every need we have. I don't care what your problem is, whatever, whatever it is, the answer is in this word. You just gotta, you gotta find it, you gotta know how to find it. Now, it's not gonna tell you how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but if you're making a sandwich for some homeless person to take it to them, you'll know why you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, amen? Yeah. So it's, just, it, it, it's in here, no matter what you do. So you've got to read it. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, right? Yes, hearing and hearing and hearing. That's how, you, that's how you strengthen that faith, amen? So you've got to read it every day. Just like anything you do, you got to, and you're going to do it well, you've got to practice, amen? Practice makes perfect, as they would say, and that's true. If you take a football player, it's a football team, it's football season, things coming in now. All the teams are practicing, playing, they played the preseason games, and the colleges have started. And uh, so they go, every, all through the week they run their plays and practice. Hopefully on game day, they'll run the plays, run them right. If you run them right, everything is good. If you don't run them right, you're, gonna, you're not going to get the things you need. And sometimes you'll get a penalty thrown on you, right? So, so if you throw them wrong, they throw a play. So generally, the team that makes the least amount of mistakes wins. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. We all, we all practice. We all, they, both, teams, both teams worked and worked hard. But the ones usually makes the least amount of mistake, least amount of mistakes wins, and you can generally to tell who are making the most mistakes because in a lot of the games, when it comes down to the last thirty seconds of the game, you'll see the quarterback back up and run all over the field. He'll all, all, the, all of his receivers will be run down the other end of the field to the, to the end zone, and he'll off and he'll throw desperation, just throw the pass down there and hope one of them comes up with. Well, no, it has a hail mary, right? Sometimes they catch it, sometimes they don't. We, a lot of times, have a tendency to throw Hail Mary prayers up to our Lord. And we do that because when we're not prepared, when we're not staying in this thing, seeking him to know, to know what his will is. I've thrown Hail Mary prayers. And you know what? He'll catch them. He, he don't drop them. And he don't turn the ball over to the devil either. But you may not get the results that you want. He, he's not gonna let you throw up Hail Mary prayers every time you turn around. If you're just not following to God, not reading, not praying, and, and seeking him, then all of a sudden the problem comes into your life. You're like, oh, what am I doing? Well, I better pray. So and it gets worse and worse and worse. Say, Lord, I'm just, I'm gonna throw it up to you and let you take care of it. Well, he takes care of things. And, and he, if you belong to him, he's gonna protect you, take care of you. But you throw too many Hail Mary prayers to the Lord and it's time for some training. It's time for some correction, amen? That's just, just, this is how it's gonna be. So my question is to you, do you practice every day? 2 Timothy says, study to show that you're approved, amen? Not to be approved, but that you are approved. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything to be approved because you're already approved when the blood of Jesus was applied to your life. But this, to show you're approved, you want to show the world when you're out, where you walk, when you're walking in Walmart, wherever you go, whatever you're doing, whatever comes out of your mouth, you want to be something that Jesus would approve of. 
Whatever your actions are, I don't want it to be something Jesus is going to approve of. So that's why we study every day. All right, how we doing? All right. That was just my intro. <laughs> so I want to, <laughs> I, I am going to enjoy myself tonight, I'm telling you, because I've been, I've been excited about this word. God has changed it on me three times, but I think it mostly is because of Shirley, but I'm ready to go now. So the title of my message is Eternity to Eternity. And I want to talk about first about eternity past, amen? I want to talk about what God thought of us in eternity past. Ephesians 1, 4 says we were found in him before the foundation of the world. Every one of us, every one of you, no matter who you are, we were all found in him before the foundation of the world. Isaiah 45, 5 says, I am the Lord and there is none else. There's no other God beside me. I was praying <coughs> last week, uh, Thursday or Friday where it was. and I just, I love to sit with the Lord at night and just not asking for anything, not say anything in particular, but just, Tell him how much I love him. And I know I'm not doing anything y'all don't do. It's just, but I'm just sitting. It's just quiet. Just say, Lord, I love you. And I said, Lord, there's none like you. And God said, there's none like you. And I thought, oh my goodness. He's right. There's none like me. I'm a unique individual. Amen. Each and every one of us are unique individuals. I want you to turn to, uh, oh, we got our stuff straight. Turn to Psalms 139. And I, I did my, I wrote mine off because my eyes were having trouble reading last time I was preaching. So I'm going to read them this time without any trouble. So if y'all turn to 139 verse 13 or just look up on the screen, I guess it's up on there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It says for, 13 says, for thou hast possessed, I'll, I'm telling you why I'm reading in King James. Because sometimes King James says it where it just, it hits and it fits. So that's why I'm saying, reading in King James. I, don't, I know that doesn't say that. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's a powerful statement right there. I mean, there's a lot of translations, but I like, I like the, the, the fact that the Lord has told me that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm unique. He made me like nobody else. And he made me, I hope I get lost if I get away from this, but he made me to be me. He just... He just created me for who I am, right? I can't be anybody but me. And because he made me that way. For, now, for years, I tried to be other things because I thought I, I, wasn't, I didn't know who I was. So I tried to be other things. I couldn't be me. I tried other things. I couldn't be, I, I can't be Freddy. Fred, only Freddy can be Freddy, right? But I have to know who I am. So, but so I, did, I never knew who I was for years. I, I, I grew up, my dad was a truck driver. I want to be a truck driver. Y'all bear with me on this one. So, now my daddy was a skirt chaser. That's the only way to say it. And I want to be like my daddy. I was bad. I'm, I'm being open before y'all guys tonight. I was, I was just a redneck truck driver. That's all I was. I was a country boy. I had my cowboy shirts on. If, if my, you can ask Tammy, she had trouble with this. When... If my shirts didn't snap down with the pockets and snap down the front, I didn't like them. I had my, I had, I, I'd pay fifty dollars for for a cowboy sh for a shirt. I call them cowboy shirts. I pay one hundred fifty dollars for a pair of cowboy boots. I pay fifty dollars for a big belt buckle. Some of big sometimes when you sit down in the truck, it just cut you off. I didn't wear cowboy hats very much, but when I did buy them, I paid a lot of money for them. And then I wore eight dollar rustler jeans from Dollar General. <laughs> Because they fit, and they fit good. <laughs> so that, and the rest of it kind of, I'll, I'll say that, so nobody knew, but I, that's, I just couldn't get away from $8 jeans. I couldn't pay $20, $25 for a pair of jeans because those rustlers look good. And I thought they looked pretty good on me. Y'all take that for what you want to. But I tried so much. And one day, my dad called me on the phone 
He said, Mike, I got saved. And I thought, I'm going to get saved. That's a lot of, it's a while after that. But I knew I was going to get saved. But I was still pretty bad. I was pretty wild. I, and all the stuff I did, I messed up my first marriage because I thought the grass was greener on the other side. I hopped over and got in that pasture and was where I was at. About three and a half late years later, the grass in that pasture died. And I was devastated because I thought I was going to do what made me better. Hurt a lot of people along the way. I got a couple of sitting in here. It was part of it. But I didn't know who it was. So I was, I was just, I just didn't know what to do. I was, just, I, I was hurting. I cried. I had mom come down. I cried. I just, I, just, I just didn't know what to do. Now, I'm, I'm safe through all this, folks. I was always safe through this. I'm, let me take you. I had already been saved at this point. Because all this stuff I was telling you, I did carrying on jump fence and all that. I done, I've been saved. So I did this after I got saved. So maybe some of y'all can relate to that. But anyway, I was on my knees in the bedroom praying one night, and the Lord said, I'm all you've got now. You're going to have to trust me. I thought this was going to be a jumping message, but I don't guess it's going to be. And I heard him say that. I knew that. And I did everything get better right then? No. But I made a decision right then. I said, Lord, you are all I have. I've made too many bad decisions. So I started to try to figure out how to trust him. And I was out one day, a couple, out a couple months, I was out one day, a couple months later, I was out at the gun show at the uh, Civic Center. And not, still not really feeling too good, but I was, I was seeking him the best I could. And I looked up and I saw Joe Williams standing down the other end of the Civic Center there. Joe happens to be a real good friend of ours. He went on to be with Jesus. He married us. He was a great friend. But the day I, at the time I saw him, I looked up and I was still wasn't in good shape, so I looked up and I saw Joe. And as soon as I said, well, I really don't want to talk to Joe, he looked up and he focused his eyes right on me. <laughs> Big old Joe Williamson smile, here he come. Well, we talked for a few minutes and he knew how bad it was hurting. He said, right, we need to spend some time together. So he, every, almost every night and every day, and him and Joe Mandeville, a good friend of mine, turned out to be our best man. Uh, they spent all kind of time with me over the next couple of months. And Joe, got, he wanted me to come to church. You know, he was preaching. He had church. Out to, they started a church at the uh, rec center, at the rec center. So he wanted me to come to church. And, uh, he finally got me to come to church. And <laughs> I walked in, and there she was. Oh, I'm telling you. Red fire engine hair. Big hair. But 1988, it was big hair. <laughs> Big hair, emerald green eyes, little pouty mouth. I can tell you what she was wearing. She's wearing a long floor-length paisley skirt with a green teal silk blouse. I mean, she just, look at her. She's pretty. She's pretty. I was smitten. Now, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know anything at that time, but I just, she caught my eye. And uh, so I enjoy, I said, well, this would be kind of fun. I enjoy going to church here. So I'll tell you what, it, 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 did, it did lift me up because Joe, had, Joe had, and, the, and the Lord had doctored me, you know what I mean? And I was feeling pretty good. And uh, she knew I was there, though. She, she knew I was there. She, it's not, she wouldn't flirt with me. But you know, you, you ladies know how you are. You can flirt, you can flirt without flirting. You know, you know how you are? You, I, you can look, ladies, will, they'll look at you without looking. I was just... And I, I, I knew she was looking, but I couldn't see her looking. But I was taken with her. I thought, I thought she was pretty. I mean, she is pretty. I was just, and I wasn't thinking anything at that time, just how pretty she was. But after a couple of weeks, I told her, I said, well, I really would like to take her out. I wouldn't mind going to dinner with her. And uh, I was feeling pretty good about it. See, the Lord was fixing me up. So Joe walked in the office where Tammy was working, where she was working that day. She walked, he walked through that door and Tammy said, I am not going out with Mike Brigsby. You can forget it. I don't need it. I'm not going to go. You can forget it. Well, about two weeks later, I got her to go out with me. Eight weeks later, we were married. That was, that was 36 years ago. That's... 
I am what I am because of God and what he did to use her to get me where I'm at. Because he made me realize I was, he, he made me realize it wasn't I wasn't a truck driver, but that wasn't, that wasn't who I was. I was trying to find my identity and what I was doing. And the Lord took, and I want to keep this as short as I can, although I'm probably not going too long. But he took me from there. So, and she didn't like the way I dressed, so that's the first thing I had to go. That was the first thing I had to go. She finally, she started buying me sport coats and button-up shirts and ties and uh, hater uh, pants and dress shoes. And she got me in them. The, the thing of it is, she got me to liking them. So that, that, that spoiled me. I, I was bad after a while down the line. I, liked, I loved clothes. I bought all kinds of clothes. But anyway, I said that just to say how much God changed me through her. I wouldn't be standing here preaching if it wasn't for her, if I hadn't married her. I wouldn't have been, I'd still been driving. Well, actually, I'm going to tell you the truth. I probably would have been dead. I was driving a truck, smoking three packs of cigarettes a day. And I'd been saved, but I had nobody, nobody teaching me about God. Nobody taught. I, when I got saved, I, I sang pretty good and I played a couple of instruments. So I got with some other people and we started a country gospel group. Started going around all the churches singing. We go in and sing, four or five songs, whatever it be, and two or three of us at the end of, end of the group, we'd go outside and stand on the front steps and smoke cigarettes to altar call. We'd go back in and play the altar call, and then we'd go home. That was my church. Yeah. And I didn't sit down and listen to the preachers in there, and I, I, as what, I know, what I've learned now, that probably, wasn't, it probably was okay because I don't think I would have been taught that much. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but from what, what God has taught me in these years since I got filled with the Holy Ghost and started seeking Him, there's a whole lot more that I've learned that I wouldn't have got there. But I wasn't getting anybody, and that was the problem. So I, 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 needed, I needed somebody to teach me and take me and mentor me into the things of God. And, and with me marrying Tammy and getting with Joe and him mentoring to me, mentoring me, and he put me in and started. That's when I felt like you know, I was called to preach. He let me preach. You wouldn't want to be at that first message, Shirley, because it was nine pages and I read every line. I was scared to death in this one. But I had my last suit and stuff on that Tammy got me. So. Anyway, I'm going to get lost here if I don't quit. But I can't be, I can only be me. And in the last few, well, since I met Tammy, and, and there's times we've had our struggles, but I can stand here today, I can tell you I know who I am. Yes. And I am being me. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I want to tell you all to do. Be, you know, don't worry about a mistake you might make or if you're not someplace where... You think God's taking you and you're not there yet? Just be you. Don't because you can't be you can't you can't be me. You don't really want to. But I can't I, I play music, but I couldn't be Rob. He's such a blessing to this church. I couldn't be couldn't be Pastor Rob. No way. They're a blessing. I love them. All right, let me go on before I get lost. The Bible says it's the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And that means that, yes, that means that he orders your steps and you walk, you should walk in them. But it also means that because you belong to him, he's ordered every step that you take. And if you're taking a few, take, walking somewhere and you take a step the wrong way, he's put his order in that step and even the next step and the next step, whatever it takes to get you back to where he wants you to be. So his order, even if you think it's disorder, his order is in every step you take. Amen? Amen. Ah. Proverbs, the rest of that, 139. 17 and 18 says, How precious are your thoughts to me. If I should count them, they are more than the grains of sand. Now this, I got curious. I started searching. And I found out there are 3,281,579 grains of sand in a cup. A gentleman by the name of Joachim Hendricks and his 12 assistants spent 1,000 hours counting them. I sit there thinking, why didn't you just ask God? <laughs> uh, if God knows how much sand is on this earth, do you think, he's, there, do you think there's anything he can't, we can't trust him with? I mean, just, we, we should trust him with everything. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Let's just put them down here. That way they won't be able to Well, that was eternity, eternity past. Let's talk about eternity future. What God did for us. Jesus laid down all his glory, came into this world as a man, left heaven, he left eternity, came into this dispensation in time, took on a body that he was forever going to be 
end because he did that. He lived a life that I couldn't live. He suffered more than we could possibly imagine for us. He died a death that I should have paid, died, and he paid a price for sin that I should have paid. John 3, 16 says, For God so loves the world, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a, that's, that's a common verse, but that's about as powerful a verse as there is. Because whoso, and I'm a whosoever. Are y'all whosoever? Yeah. So I hope, I hope everybody we got to hear whosoever tonight. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit to the day of redemption. John 10, 28, Jesus said, Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 6, 39 says, All that my Father has given me, I should lose nothing but raise them up at the last day. I just want to establish here that just how secure our eternity is. Now, I'm just, you can have your thoughts. You, you, you can think you can lose. I, I'm, I'm not going to try to discuss policy, what you might think is Bible policy or belief. I, was, I, took, I took the Holy Ghost into pure hell with me for about four years when I backslid. And I found out as I learned more that I, that I found that out for a fact. I took him with me because the Bible says it never leave you nor forsake you. Now, some people say, said, told me I wasn't saved. And at that time, I believed him because I didn't know any better. But I didn't feel like I wasn't saved. I, I, I talked to God all the time. I'd be in places that I didn't need to be. I'd be sitting there thinking, God, I, don't hope, I hope you don't come back today. I hope you don't come back right now because I'm in a place I don't need to be. I talked to him a lot. Amen. Matthew 28, 18, excuse me, Matthew 18, verse 21. The disciples came and asked Jesus, says, how many times should we forgive should we forgive? Seven times? And Jesus said, no. I say you can forgive him 70 times seven. Now, if you add that up, multiply that, that's 490 times. That don't, just, that don't mean 490 times. If it was 490 times, I'd have been out six months. I'd have run out of time. I'd have been up first saying, Lord, forgive me for this. He said, no, that's 491. You're done. But that's not what that means. In fact, I might not have made it a month. You know what I mean? So, but anyway, it means if you look that up, 70 times seven in the Greek is countless times. And when it's countless times, that means God don't count them. So if you don't count this one, and you, he don't count this one, he don't count this one, where, where, where's, he, where's he going to hold you accountable to, for the sins? He held Jesus accountable for the sin. Now, don't misunderstand. You got new stuff in the flesh and make some mistakes. You smoke cigarettes to like a freight train for 10, 15 years, there's a good chance you can die of lung cancer. You got a drinking problem and you don't quit, you can either die of cirrhosis of the liver or pull out in front of the wrong car and kill yourself and somebody else. There are consequences in this life for what we do. But there, because there are a lot of people that struggle with sin, bad sins, that love the Lord with all their heart. They just can't get victory over that part. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about some other sins that I'm not going to bring them up, but some people would disagree with. But I believe if you truly gave your heart to the Lord and you know that you gave your heart to the Lord and you're saved, He deals with you and your sins. So I'm going to ask you this. What sin, what sin could you commit that would make God say, that's too much, I'm done with you? Anybody, anybody got one? Huh? I can't hear you. Well, that's, that's not getting saved. I'm not, if you're saved, what sin would be so much that you say, you're, you're not in my family anymore? Which is which is not believing, which is not accepting God. That'd be the only one. But that's 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 not that is not being saved. Because anyone saved is not going to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You know it's in you. What's a sin? What's, what name? Can anybody know a sin that Jesus couldn't pay for? He paid for them all, right? When he crawled on the cross, he said it's finished. So here, here's what convinced me and myself, my, my my security in, 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 in my salvation with the Lord. Where's the line, or what's the sin, what is the sin? It will cause you to tell your children they're not your family anymore. I, I, I can't. I can't think of one. No. No, I can't. Every one of you in here would lay down your life for your children. And there's nothing they could do. I was rotten when I was a kid. My mom would never, mom would have never, I couldn't have done anything to her. She just wouldn't have threw me out. She'd have jerked me through a knot hole sideways and, <laughs> Locked me with them claws in my arm and held me till she was done with me. But I was hers. And you're, you're all your parents and your kids are yours. Now, there, I, know, I know there are people that 
have thrown their kids out of their houses and things like that. That, that happens in life. But those people don't know who Jesus is. They, they might even be saved, but they don't know who Jesus is. They, might, they don't know who they are. They just don't know. Amen? So, if you can think of one, you come tell me, but I, I don't believe there is one. So that's our eternity, and if we're in Jesus, it can't be taken away. I believe that with all my heart. If you believe otherwise, I don't know what to tell you. I, I just, I can't see anything else. Okay, now we're going to talk about eternity present, what we are to be doing. Because I told you my message was eternity to eternity. And we're not there, we're not there yet. We ran eternity past, it found in him. And one of these days again, he's, we're going to be in him in eternity future. Amen? But the day, nine months before you were born, God placed the spirit of your life inside that body that was inside your mother the moment, she, the moment you were conceived. He, put, he set you out of eternity and into this dispensation in time. Amen? And you're going to, if, you, if you know Jesus, you're going back to eternity. That's, that's, that's locked in. Because the day you got saved, your spirit got reconnected to eternity again. And that's where it's going to stay. But we're still here. We're in the, we're in the two. Eternity, eternity. We're in the two. We're here now. Amen? So there's still stuff that needs to be done. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. There's a two command, two, there are two great commandments. Jesus said, love your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on those two laws, on those two laws hang all the commandments and the prophets. In other words, those two laws cover everything. If you can make it, those two laws going for you as a, every day in your life, you're going to fulfill the things that God's called you to do. And in Matthew 28, 19, 20, we know about the Great Commission. He tells us to go to all the world, preach the gospel. So for, so for us, your world's wherever you can go and preach the gospel, amen? Uh, can you put pic, picture number one up there for me? Nope. There he is, okay. That gentleman's name is Brian Freeman. He's actually on Brian Freeman, Tulsa. The reason it's Tulsa is he's actually from the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. And uh, he was coming down the sidewalk the other day and I, I drove by and I, pulled into Walgreens. I thought, I need to talk to him. I want to tell him about Jesus. So I pulled in. After just talking, as soon as I pulled in, he had a sign on front of his cart talking about Jesus. He has tattoos. His billfolds all covered with Jesus stuff. He just, I said, well, I was going to talk to you about Jesus. I said, but I got up here and you know who your Savior is. He said, oh yeah. And we talked for a few minutes. And uh, we, uh, after that I left. And I did what I felt the Lord told me to do. I went home, I was sitting there eating a sandwich, eating dinner, eating lunch, it was about noon. And I was sitting there and all of a sudden the Lord said, you need to go find him. So, so I, I knew that was the Lord. So I, got, I told him, I said, I'll be back. So I hopped in the car and I, and I knew he was, he was walking. He could have went down Main Street in Hurricane. He could have went down Lynn Street towards Cologne or he could have went Route 60 or 34 over to 60. So I shot there first. So I got over to the sit Route 60 and we were doing construction little girl holding the flag. I said, did you see a little guy down here come down through here a little bit ago? Had a cart. I said, yeah, he came through about 15, 20 minutes ago. I said, good. So they turned, they turned the flag so I'd go and I, I shot up Route 60. And I couldn't find him. I drove five or six miles. I said, nah, he didn't get that far. I said, he must have went towards Hamlin. So I come back and went down Hamlin. I drove three or four miles. He didn't get that far. So I thought, Lord, either he went through another way or he was an angel. I said, but I, thought, but I said, you told me to come find him. So I come back to Route 60. There he was sitting over in the grass, just off the side where those people were doing the construction, sitting in the shade. So I stopped and talked with him, and he told me the reason his name is Brian, the Tal Brian Freeman Tulsa. He's from the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. He travels all, he, he travels, he's homeless, he travels all over, and he picks up and cleans up stuff in the cities and places where he's at because he didn't like the trash, and he didn't like the cities being, being covered with trash. He does what he can. There are a couple articles in, online I found of him that they've done on him out in Tulsa. They like him out there. He's there you know, they, they appreciate what he does. He, he's, uh, he's happy as can be. He's got his little dog with him. Just He's happy. He's homeless, but he's happy. So we talked a little bit more, and I said, can I get a selfie with you? He said, sure. We took, took a selfie, and I, had to, I did a video, but just didn't, the sound wasn't good enough, so I decided not to do that. But he knows who Jesus is. So, I saw this in a movie a couple weeks ago. I, I wish I'd have thought of it, but I didn't. 
We live, we die. It's what happens in the middle that's important. That's, and that's where we're at. We're in the middle. We live, we come out of eternity into this life, and we die, we want it. So what we do here is important, amen? Very important. Got a question. How do you, how do you want to be known? It's a very important question. Matthew 7, 15, 7 verse 15 says, you'll know them by their fruit. John 13, 35 says, you're known by your love. So what's your motive? When Jesus met the woman at the well, now he was tired, he was thirsty, and he asked her for water, but he just didn't come to give water. He came to give her life, which is what he did. Amen. Acts chapter 3, you read about a lame man that was laying at the streets of the gate. Beautiful. I'll get it out of here now. That man lay there every day. Had his little cup, whatever he was holding, begging for alms. People walked by him every day. Some threw stuff in. Some threw, didn't throw any in. But he just threw it in and went on about their business. One day, Peter and John come walking up to this guy. Now, he'd been there since he, as long as he could sit there, he'd been there he was, because he was lame from his youth. And that Peter and John walked up, and the Bible says Peter fastened his eyes on, on this man. I, that, and and I, I said, looked up the concordance things in, in, in the Greek, and it means that Peter locked on him. He was focused on him. He was there for a reason. He was there on purpose, with purpose to have him. <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but anyway, he locked on him, and he was, he was just there. And Peter said, look on us. And the lame man looked up on him and said, expecting to receive and I've always read that and thought, well, he's just, you know, he looked, expected to receive some money. But even in that scripture, it's the, when the lame man looked up on him, he looked in Peter's eyes, and he'd never seen anybody look at him like he'd looked at him before. He, nobody ever looked at him when he, nobody, people might have looked at him when they walked by, but they walked by. They threw some money in, and they walked by. When he looked up and saw Peter, when he, now when it said, and he looked up to him expecting, he saw in Peter's eyes something was different. He wasn't, he wasn't, he's not going to get money. He was going to get something. He didn't really know yet what, but he was going to get money. He had been there for, I, I, I forget if it says how old he was. I don't remember. But every day he'd come back. Some people would bring him back, set him down. People would give him some money or whatever they gave him. Somebody, they carried him home. The next day, carried him back. Every day, back and forth, back and forth. Nothing changed. I don't want to get political on people. But we got a government that does that to a lot of our people. They give you just enough to make you have to come back the next day. They don't give you enough to change your life. Amen. But when Peter came back, he said, such as I have. Now, Peter had money. He owned a fishing fleet. He had money. You know, we know that uh, you always heard that Judas carried all the money, but Peter owned a business. He had, I'm sure he had a few shekels or whatever it is in his pocket, quarters, whatever you want to call it. So Peter could have just gave him some money and went on in himself. Amen. But Peter knew he was there for a reason. So Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. And the man's strength came to his legs, he stood up, and they walked into the temple praising the Lord. And the thing is, now something big changed that day. Something really big changed the next day. The next day, everybody going into the temple didn't find that guy sitting there anymore. He was out looking for a job somewhere. He was walking. He was doing something. He wasn't depending on people for money anymore. He was doing something. I'm sure he was doing something for the Lord. But he, his life changed that day. He prayed out the unemployment office, or the employment office, looked, filling out forms. You know what I mean? He's, his life changed. He went somewhere after that. That was a life-changing event for him. So God's, once in a while, God's going to look up on it. You're going to feel God look up on us with that same look. He's got his eyes focused on you for something in particular. Amen. So when you look up and realize that, expect something great. Amen? Whew. Thank you, Lord. Luke 21, verse 1 through 3, talks about where the widow threw in her two mites. And that was, that's, Jesus said she did more than anybody else here. I'm just paraphrasing now. She gave everything she had because Jesus meant everything to her. Jesus meant more than the next meal that she probably didn't have. I got a feeling Jesus blessed her. Some, the Lord blessed her somehow. Uh, turn to uh, Matthew 25, or put it up on the screen, verses uh, 34 through 40. 
I might be able to get through this. Surely you might not run out on me. We're good there? Okay. Then Matthew 25, 34 says, The king, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was stranger, and you, gave, you took me in. Naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, you came to me. Then the righteous answered and said, Lord, when did we do all these things? I mean, the, in, the, in the scripture, they repeated again, but I'm just going to, they just said the same thing back to him. And, Jesus, and the, the king answered and said, and as much as you did this unto one of them, you did it unto me. And that goes right along with what we're, what we're supposed to be doing. Amen? We are supposed to be feeding the sick, feeding, feeding the hungry, seeing the sick, healing, uh, healing the sick, visiting the sick. Don't find a stranger. If you've got a stranger, tell them about Jesus. I, I'm not enough. Please don't take this as bragging. I love to find people walking along the road pushing their carts. I... <laughs> I love to talk with them. It surprised me how many of them find out say they say that they say they're, they're saved. They say they're born again. They say they know who Jesus is, but some don't. And I get a chance to witness to them, and uh, just you know, I do what I can for them. And we all should be. Used to be, I used to be a drive by, wouldn't give it a thought, but the Lord broke me of that. I, I, went, I was going to uh, Walmart one night down in Huntington. It was the night before doe season came in. I didn't have my tag, so I had to run down to Walmart. There, it was one was at 29th Street exit where the the, uh, the M-I-N-G, I-M-G uh, medical thing is. Anyway, so I come off the exit, come down this, to the light, and there was a guy standing there with a sign. And as soon as I went by him, I felt like the Lord said, you should have stopped and gave me some money. And I knew, and I said, Lord, I said, I, I, know, I know it's you. So I said, Lord, if I ever see him again, I'll give him some money. I went under the, under the interstate, in the, or in the Walmart, in the... In the uh, to get my tag. It didn't take me but a minute to get my tag. I went in three minutes until I was back in my car. Pulled down the stoplight right there on that side of Walmart. There he was standing. So the Lord taught, I, I was obedient to the Lord. And I've learned that I'd rather miss it doing the right thing than miss it doing the wrong thing. Amen? So I, I, I take it for what it's worth. It's just... Uh, there are people out there need help. You know, and you know, even the people that might be scamming the system, they need Jesus. They need Jesus. So, now I'm not telling you to give them. Now, there's some I won't give money. I'll buy them a sandwich. But there's some I'm not going, I'm not going to buy their bottle for. It. Amen? And, and that's, that's just being smart. Amen? So, anyway, let's see where we're going here. Luke 18, verses 10 through 14, talks about the Pharisee and the publican. All know the story, right? The Pharisee, he stood up to pray. He said, Lord, I thank you. I'm not like all these other people. I'm not like this publican down here. I give tithes and I... A better way to say it was, I'm, I'm where everybody can see me. I let everybody know how great I am. I just do everything I, I know I'm supposed to do so people will see how great I am because I think I'm great. Amen. That's what he thought. The publican said, he wouldn't even lift his head up to the Lord. He said, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Just humbled himself before the Lord. He couldn't say, he had nothing to say, but forgive me, Lord, I'm a sinner. Can you give me the next pick? Number two. There it is, there it is. Now that's a cartoon, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of, there's a lot of message right there, Amen. What, what do you, what do you, do you do things because it's in your heart or do you do them because you think you have to or you think it's expected? See, one way is the flesh, but in the flesh, you're fighting a battle that you can't win. But if you do it in the spirit, you're winning a battle that you don't even fight. Amen? Because the Lord fights your battles. People make a lot of laws that you're required to follow. Laws don't change hearts. Jesus does. The law told Israel what to do, but Jesus gives us a heart to want to do it. Moses knew, God showed Moses his, acts, his ways, he showed Israel their, act, his, his, their acts. They knew what God did, but Israel knew why God did it. In Jesus, not only do we know what Jesus does, but we know why he does it. And also we know what we do and why we're doing it because we have Jesus in our heart. Amen? 
1 Corinthians 13, 1 says, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not charity, I'll become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Just like a race car. You can have a great race car and you rev it up and that motor sounds good. Roy, you know about this and some of the other guys. This sounds great. But if you don't put it in gear and hit the gas, what good is it? It ain't going to do nothing. So that, that's, you know, we, we need to be more than a, we need, a, we need to be in gear. Amen? And, and I know, I know we're not, we, we got a great bunch of people in here. We, we do great work in here. And I, I don't think, to me, this wasn't a message of correction tonight or anything like that. It's, it's, it's just a word of encouragement. But if something touches you and it gives you something to think about, amen. Amen? All right. Shirley, I'm going to try to close with this. When you wake up each day, what are your thoughts and your intentions? Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divided asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. My thoughts and intentions are to do what glorifies God. When I do, that's great. Amen? I won't always do great, though. Sometimes I miss it. When I don't, that's when I thank God for His mercy and His grace. But following Him, seeking Him, I do the good most of the time. I do a whole lot better. I'm better than I was yesterday. And tomorrow I believe I'll be better. Not that I'm anything, but I'll do, I'll do better than I did today. Uh, pick, put a pick three and four for me, please. I think you can only put them up one at a time. But... Nope, not that one. Back up, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> it's the... Uh, Silver and a gold. Oh, I forgot to have you pick them. See, oh, no, 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 no. Put them back up. I'm sorry. Look here, look here, look here. Here's what happens to a lot of people. The angel angel said, looks like you have heaven basic. We don't want heaven basic. We We want the deluxe plan, amen? So put the other one up there for me. I'm sorry, I messed up, but I want you all to see these. He says, you received your rewards on earth. So that's all he gets in heaven. Now, that might be funny, but it's not funny. It's funny, not funny. Amen. I'm sorry. I missed y'all up back there. Now, I put pictures five and six up before me. Judgment's coming. Judgment seat's coming. There's going to be a time when we stand and we'll give an account for the rewards we see. That looks pretty good. Amen. That don't look so good. My desire is I have a large pile of gold, silver, and precious stones and a small pile of wood, hay, and stubble. My hate wood, hay, and stubble probably will be a little more, more than I want it to be, but my desire is that it's not. My desire is to have a great big hate wood, hay, and stubble, or a great big pile of gold, silver, and precious stone. But it's not for me, see. It's for me to be able to cast it at the feet of Jesus. We're going to cast our jewels and our crowns and everything at the feet of Jesus. See, you don't want to be, you don't want to be standing up there and watch everything burn up. Now, you're going to be in heaven. If you're saved, you're going to be in heaven. This has nothing, these rewards have nothing to do with you being saved. These rewards have, or have to do with what you do in this life while you're in the two, amen? I, I, you don't want to be standing there and you're looking over here, there's just maybe just a couple of trinkets and you've got a big bonfire going over here on this side of you. It's all burned up to nothing. And you're going to be standing watching everybody else casting these jewels and casting these crowns and casting these rewards up to Jesus' feet. And you've got Two or three, to, and that's and that's okay. I'm, I'm not saying it's okay. It's not okay. But you're in heaven. But you don't want that. You want to you want to be able to glorify God with everything you can. Amen. So all I'm gonna say is, what will your piles look like? What would they look like? And uh, got one more picture up there. You didn't book. There's going to be a lot of people who's going to stand up there, but not even get there. But they're going to look up and say, God's going to say, you didn't look. Depart from me, I never knew you. Amen? Now, the cartoon's funny. Just try to keep it lighthearted. But it, it, it depicts something that's serious. It's going to be serious for a lot of people. Amen?